Great to be here with you online today. It's so good. Across our sites, uh, in-person gatherings over the next couple of weeks, we are doing our Christmas experience. And it's going to look slightly different from our normal Sundays. And I wanted to bring something of that to you today. But one thing I cannot bring you through the medium of online is I can't bring you the animals that will be there. So we're going to have Christmas nativity animals um, at each of our sites as a part of that experience. But I want you to imagine, if you can, what the scene will look like um, and in each of our sites. Folks will be coming up with their families. There'll be all sorts of activities to do. And that somewhere on the site will be a pen of animals, donkeys and sheep and, I don't know, chickens. I'm not sure that they were actually in the nativity scene, but they may well be on our sites for the Christmas experience. And on our Bracknell site, um, where this message will be spoken, uh, we're going to be asking the question, what's happened to the animal's food? What's happened to the animal's food? And it links in with the nativity story that Mary laid the baby Jesus in a manger. So the problem for the animals is there's been a mix-up in the manger, and the manger is empty. I've had a manger made up especially for us, for the purposes, and I brought it with me today. I, I, hopefully you can see it behind me. We've got it propped up on chairs at the moment so that you can see it nicely. Uh, but the manger is empty. The manger is empty. And the animals are like, where's my food? And you can imagine coming down to your meal on Christmas Day. You get there at Christmas lunch and you're served an empty plate. There's going to be some consternation, isn't there? You're not going to be happy about that. So we're, we're playing on that with the animals and with the kids who are going to be there as well, and just be saying, you know, why is this manger empty? And we've heard in the reading already exactly why that was. It wasn't empty for long, was it? No, it had been filled with something else, or someone else. It was filled with Mary's firstborn son. As we heard Luke wrote, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Now, it wasn't normal even in those days to use a manger, an animal feeding trough. It wasn't usual to use that for a cot. There's all sorts of unusual things that happen with kids. My, my sister's kid came so far, she had to stay at home and give birth in the bath. She couldn't make it into hospital in time. But I assure you, they put the baby in a cot pretty soon afterwards. You know, when my kids were born, much more orthodox, they each went into one of Frimley Park's baby cribs. And if you wanted to visit us, well, they all kind of looked the same, but you had to know the room number that we were in at the delivery suite ward in Frimley Park Hospital. That's how you could find us. But when the angels gave directions to the shepherds to find Mary and Joseph's baby, they told them to look for the baby lying in a manger. I'm telling you, it, it wasn't normal. Jesus was the only baby in Bethlehem lying in a manger. But apart from his unusual bed, what was so special about this baby? Why did God fill the manger with Jesus? I want you to hold that thought. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Let me show you something else that's looking a bit empty. Take a look at this sculpture. How clever is this? It's all one piece of metal, so cleverly connected. And it's the work of a French artist called Bruno Catalano. He grew up originally in Morocco, and he wanted to depict something of what's left behind when we travel from place to place in life. Everyone has missing pieces in his or her life that he won't find again, he said. Well, this year in our Bracton site especially, we've had the privilege of welcoming many new friends from other countries to our community. In the, in the recent months, especially, we've been joined by new friends from Ukraine and from Hong Kong. And both those sets of communities have been leaving behind their homeland for the freedom and safety that we enjoy here. And to all you who have joined us, you are so welcome with us. But I do wonder if you feel a little like this, like a piece of you is missing, empty, if you like, left behind in the country where you grew up. I've got another similar sculpture to show you. 
This one is called Melancholy and it can be found in a small park along the shore of Lake Geneva in Switzerland. And the artist in this one created it to express something of the emptiness that he felt when he lost someone very close. Many of us have experienced significant loss in our lives and we can feel it even more keenly at special times, especially like Christmas. Maybe like me, you were surprised how emotional you felt when the Queen died earlier this year. It was one of those times when our world is shaken a little and we're reminded of our own losses closer to home. Well, these amazing artists are helping us articulate something of what it feels like when there's something within us is missing. Something feels empty. And whether or not we've experienced the loss of our homeland or the loss of a loved one yet, the Bible tells the story that we all have a spiritual emptiness without God. This emptiness is the root cause of all sorts of empty feelings like inadequacy, loneliness, anxiety, insecurity. And however we try to fill up our lives, this spiritual emptiness cannot be filled by anything else but him. Even returning to your homeland or holding on to loved ones can't fill it. Money and popularity can't fill it. Jim Carrey, the actor, famously said, I hope everybody could get rich and famous and will have everything they ever dreamed of so they will know that it's not the answer. Let's come back to our reading about Jesus, the baby laid in the manger. The angel said to the shepherds, a saviour has been born to you. Now that's a strange announcement, isn't it? No one said that about my kids when they were born. You see, God had seen the spiritual emptiness problem and in this filled manger, Jesus was coming to rescue people from it. He didn't only come to fill an empty manger. He came to fill spiritually empty people. People like you and me. Well, how, you may well ask. Well, he didn't stay a baby, right? If we fast forward from that first Christmas Luke recorded in our reading, we actually learn much more about Jesus' adult life than his childhood. When he was in his 30s, he switched professions from working as a craftsman to becoming a travelling teacher. And he lived his life filled up spiritually with God. People could see what that looked like. He was at peace. He was playful. He loved others deeply. He knew that he was loved by God, whom he called his father. He was secure in his identity without needing to post about it. And he stood up for justice without becoming a tyrant himself. He healed the sick. He taught people what would bring them peace and joy too. This is what being spiritually filled with God was like. And one of the astounding things Jesus said was this, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John tells us about that. He was talking about us. He was talking about you and me and our spiritual emptiness being filled up with God. You too can have this truly full life, said Jesus. Well, fast forward some more. As you probably know, Jesus was killed for what he claimed. But even this wasn't an accident. This was part of the saving rescue mission the angel announced in our reading. Jesus had to die in order to make this life available to you and me. And God raised him from the dead, alive again, to prove it was true. These are truly astonishing claims for the baby in the manger. If they are true, then it changes everything for us. If he is still alive, then he can still offer that God-filled life to fill our spiritual emptiness. We can still know that love, that security, 
that acceptance, his justice, his healing, his peace and his joy today. So for the animals question, why did God fill the manger with a baby? Well, God filled the manger with Jesus, that Jesus might fill you with his life. That's a lot to consider, I know. If you only remember one thing, remember this. When you see a manger filled with a baby Jesus this Christmas, remember it's your life he really wants to fill. And a life filled with God is a very, very good thing. We're going to sing our carol. Maybe you want to just sit and listen to this next carol now. And as we listen to it, you might like to take a moment to talk to God right where you are. You don't need to tell the people next to you or who you're sitting with or you may be just on your own right now anyway. But this is just between you and him. And maybe you want to pray something like this. Dear God, I feel something of that emptiness without you. Please show me more of this full life that Jesus came to bring. Let's enjoy that moment now.